So Honda is back in the game. They're back in the game, Mark. Big time. Honda CBR RR SP. So we were going to get Jonathan Ross in for this review. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? But um, the, 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 I, I found out how many R's were involved in this, and I didn't think it would go down that well on camera. But yes, so, so Honda CBR RR thousand Fireblade. We're back in the game. It's, it's like a game of countdown. This isn't it. <laughs> it can is. I have a consonant, please, Carol? <laughs> this official CBR RRSP. How many different words can you make out of all of that? Well, well, what a bike, isn't it? And you know, it's so funny on that name in front. I mean, actually, you know, at Knox, we've got you know products that need named and stuff, yeah. and we've got the Urban Pro at the moment. Imagine next year we're going to call it like the Urban Pro Race, Urban Pro Pro, Urban Pro. I don't know, whatever. Well, yeah, what, 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 what happened? They to ran me? out of steam with that one. But yes, it, it probably justifies it because the CBR is massively iconic. Oh. Uh, sports bike. It's the one that changed the market back in the 90s. The, the, they're the pioneers of super bikes, right? Yes. Sport bikes. You know, that you go back, yeah, like you say, you go back to the 90s. The Fireblade was the bike, right? Was the, the bike. bike. And yeah. I think it's fair to say in the, in the following years, certainly kind of in the last maybe five, maybe ten, They've just been a little bit superseded, haven't they? As soon as BMW launched their S1000RR in 2010, so we are going back nine, ten years, they just moved the game forward, didn't they? Yeah. And, and again, what's quite interesting is uh, what they've done in terms of how they've launched this bike, getting Mark Marquez involved, and you quite rightly were talking about how the performance on track with MotoGP hasn't necessarily translated in terms of what you can go out into your showroom and purchase and ride on the road. Well, I think there's been a bit of a disparity or a bit of a disconnect and I'm sure some of the um, the guys at Honda and the dealerships would have been frustrated yeah. at that because on, on the one hand you've got this massive marketing machine of the MotoGP yeah. and the fact that they're winning everything yeah. and Marquez is like you know well, it's dominating just, it's just totally dominating and then what you can actually purchase on the road which is the Fireblade is sort of like behind the pack actually it's probably yeah. fallen out of or into obscurity really you know it can't win so, any of the tests because it's not powerful enough yeah. doesn't have the electronics actually in the real world it's probably a bloody good oh, bike to be honest one. um but this, this is last year's one i considered purchasing one last yeah. year because they always look great and because the dealers can't shift them there's a whacking finance um or great finance See, of, yeah. a, a, available on it yeah. and it'll still be a great you know it just didn't have the electronics i'm not personally massive on electronics just because Anyway, that's where I sort of come from. But this new one, you know, oh. talk a bit, yeah, it is bringing all of that uh, prowess from MotoGP well, back into a bike that, that, that is going to be an absolute stonk and probably a class leader, to be fair. The, 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 the reality is, it, you know, it, the, these super bikes for, for all the manufacturers, Yamaha, Ducati, BMW, Kawasaki, and Honda are halo products, aren't they? And and it is, a, it is a kind of top trumps battle. If you, if, you, if you come to war, you better bring your heaviest hardware. And, and, and you're quite right, unfortunately for Honda, they've just, they've just been that half step behind, haven't they? Until yeah. now, until now. To, to be honest, the spec sheet on this thing is... It's massive. Yeah. I mean, what we're talking, 216 horsepower. Well, the, the figures have been banded around, anything between 214, 217 horsepower. I mean, we talk, you know, we've obviously done a, quite a few videos on the super hyper nakeds. These are even more powerful. I mean, they're just it's insane. Yeah, and 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 but but I think you know the, the the significant difference between that market and this is what they're what the way that they're kind of positioning this bike is it's very track focused. Yes, and and that's reflected again in in kind of how many different things you've got on it: IMU, wheelie control, multiple traction control modes, um, and the amount of the amount of uh, engineering and changes that have gone into the engine. So the, the, a lot of the inspiration around this is from the RC two one three V which is effectively the GP bike, and it, it also gets raced at the Isle of Man TT. You, you're talking titanium everything, aluminium everything. Um, the, the list just goes on and on and on with this bike. You know, electronics, uh, with the SP bike, which is the one we're looking at, electronic suspension, it, it's, it's got uh, in, improved um, ride-by-wire, a new TFT, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a brute. I mean, it, you know, they're, 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 um, although the exhaust looks like the standard Honda can, it was developed in conjunction with Akrapovich. 
And I mean, we haven't even talked about the styling. I mean, the styling on this bike, in my opinion, because obviously styling is subjective. Yeah, but very much. This, this is really gorgeous. I mean, and they do it in a black version as well, which we'll put into the, uh, the frame right now. But they're all black. I'm an all black fan. My yeah. bike is all black. Yeah. Um, but that is jaw droppingly gorgeous in my opinion i love what they've done with the with the wings that yeah so of, so again gp you know, inspired got a, a, a separate flappy wing you know you've got <laughs> something built into the it probably uh, does fly i mean maybe if they made them slightly bigger you could just take <laughs> yeah. off with this couldn't you but i mean it, it, I think give it too much that happy handle you probably will well i mean i dread to think again we haven't talked about you know the the, the curb weight wet no. wet ready curb curb weight two and effectively 200 kilos yeah super super competitive with that so you talk, you're talking about bikes that are doing a thousand horsepower per ton yeah that I mean, is and, and and they're stuck to the road with like the tiniest bit of rubber <laughs> yeah and there better be good rubber on it so there's the uh super courses pirelli yeah. you know it's the that's the top of the well look that, that's as close to it that's as close to a track tire for the road as you can get right yeah so you know they're going to be super sticky the section on it is absolutely massive yeah but um yeah. and you've got great brakes as well so the sp is fitted with uh brembo's dilemmas oh, no, which we yeah. talked about that brake actually quite a lot of the um, the top bikes that are coming out are fitted with that caliper and that's been orientated and peppered with holes to make it lighter, to induce more air. Um, massive amount of power available yeah. on that yeah. uh, Absolutely. on that braking system. And yes, again, frankly, you're gonna need it. You are love, need it. I love the exhaust. Actually, I love the look of the exhaust. And you know, again, we're seeing like exhaust get bigger and bigger and bigger. We've had quite a few conversations <laughs> about that. But this, uh, they've made a really, really nice job of yes. it. And and they've hidden the cat well as well. Yeah. I mean, I'm not a massive fan of that S1000 RR cat. The end can's quite nice, but it's got an absolute coffin of a, of a <laughs> catalytic converter. It's, I mean, it, 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 they've it's, hidden this quite nicely with the uh, with the plastics. Well, it's interesting, isn't it? What 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 um what we're finding is obviously you know sort of walking around the show and, and reviewing various different bikes is how the different manufacturers come up with different solutions for this Euro 5 legislation. And isn't it, isn't it interesting how some of them seem to do an amazing job of the packaging and others not so much, but everybody's presented with different problems. You know, I don't think necessarily uh, Euro 5 issues translate based on how much power your engine produces, but like with the Kawasaki, you've got a forced induction and it's a whole different problem. Yeah. Um, but proportionally, this does look just right, doesn't yeah. it? And and, and that, that kind of reference back to MotoGP, you can see that in every aspect of the bike. Yes. The winglets, the, the, the longer swing arm, uh, the, the handlebar position, the tech, you know, the, the, I mean, they have taken a big step forward with this bike and they haven't, you, you, you definitely get the sense and the feeling that they've left no stone unturned this time. Sure. You know, you, the, the, we know this, the, you know, the BMW just launched a new double R. Yamaha have just come to market with their new R1 and R1M. Um, you know, you, there are uh, obviously Panigale and, and there are different iterations of the V4, but they're all very similar, aren't they? Similar weight, similar power. So again, as we always say, you know, when this, when this gets launched and reviewed and compared, it's going to be absolutely fascinating, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So the standard bike comes fitted with a uh, show of big piston fork, yeah. a standard and Nissin brakes. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's probably going to be great. And that bike comes at uh, 19, well, 20,000, basically. Yeah, give or take 20 um, grand. The SP is another three and a half grand, yeah. but it comes with some extra trick bits, yeah. doesn't it? So you've yeah. got a semi-active Olin's front and rear shock. Yes. Yeah. Um, can I can I refer to my notes? Because this, yeah, this is this is such this a is, lot of spec on this bike. So so um, in conjunction with the hardware, the uh, Olin's objective-based tuning interface now offers finer suspension adjustment front and rear. Um, three individual modes can be set and stored, allowing the riders to configure multiple settings for track, and and you can switch it whenever you want whilst you're riding the bike. I mean that's quite impressive because you've got you know if you are going to take some track, there's a multitude of tracks that you can yeah. take. You know there's some really bumpy tracks that we've yeah. got here in the UK. Yeah. You know bone shakers, and then you're going to take it out to somewhere like Haref or something. Long sweepers. You know there's some different setups well, needed for that, and, and also for weather conditions, all, right? Yeah, exactly. So the, if you go out and it's it's you know it's damp or it's bone dry, you are going to want to yeah. you know you're going to want some more compliance in your bike. So, I mean it, you know this is the thing with this bike, isn't it? You, you, yes, I'm sure on the road it's a very impressive bike, but you know I mean and again without going over old ground here, it. It's got way too much performance for the road, in, in all honesty. You know, 217 horsepower, 200 wet. You know, the only way you're ever going to be able to extract anything like the full 
potential of this bike is on track. Yeah. And, and, and they're not making any secret of that, are they? I don't no. think. So that's been our first look at the CBR RR 1000 from Honda, a real game changing bike. Please like, please comment, please subscribe to the channel too, and we'll see you next time.